You were just thrown into the middle of cameras, and it was anything goes. My girl. Stephen, Stephen, Stephen. That was terrible. Simon was loud and proud, telling everyone how they sucked. Tamika, Tamika. 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 Go to an audition where they lie to you. Thank you very much. I could not believe what was coming out of Simon's mouth. Phone up your vocal coach and demand a refund. Oh, my God. Great. We were like family. And then we became America's favorite dysfunctional family. The singer and former Idol judge alleges that producer Nigel Lithgow sexually assaulted her on two occasions. Abdul claims in the first incident that Lithgow pushed her against a wall, grabbed her genitals, and shoved his tongue down her throat. And in the second instance, she claims that he forced himself on top of her while she was sitting on his couch and attempted to kiss her. Now, Lithgow has denied any wrongdoing, saying that he is shocked and saddened by these allegations, saying, quote, while Paula's history of erratic behavior is well known, I can't pretend to understand exactly why she would file a lawsuit that she must know is untrue. But I can promise that I will fight this appalling smear with everything I have. End quote. So let's talk some more about these allegations and about the response. I want to bring in trial attorney Michelle Thomas to help us do that. Good morning, my friend. Nice to see you. I uh, have to start just with the allegations. So let's start there and then we'll get to his response. So uh, tell me your thoughts, Michelle. You do a lot of civil work. Uh, you know the system very well. What were your thoughts when you heard about this suit being filed? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's really concerning if what Paula Abdul is alleging is true, that he was groping her, touching her private parts and first in an elevator and then subsequently at his home. But at the same time, the question remains, why now? Why now is Paula Abdul raising these claims? And also, why would she even put herself in, in the second instance in his home in a private capacity if she had those concerns about him being sort of a sexual predator or anything like that? So I think there's a lot of questions here that arise from these allegations that are just coming out now. Um, but if true, then certainly it's disturbing because no one should have to tolerate or put up with that in a workplace. You're absolutely right, Michelle. Boy, you said some great things there, uh, unpacking some of what you said there. So in terms of the why, I had the same question. Why now? Why not then? Paula Abdul's a, a powerful woman, but we know it's not easy for women or for any victim, you know, woman or man to, to speak out. It can be really, really tough. Um, and I, I read that she just filed this in the nick of time that the statute in California was about to expire, the statute of limitations, in order to uh, have justice for something that may have happened, you know, many, many years back. Uh, it, you know, that statute allowed this window for victims to go back in time. But she just, I read, just made the filing deadline by like a day. Uh, and so, so you wonder if she was struggling with this. That made me think, I wonder if, if she's been going back and forth in her mind. And I also read that she was afraid of retaliation. Um, that doesn't surprise you, does it, Michelle? It does not, especially the workplace retaliation component, because obviously there's going to be repercussions, though legally there's not supposed to be repercussions if someone files a complaint about a superior who's conducting themselves in an inappropriate manner. But we both know, Julie, that practically speaking, it does happen. She could have lost her job or she could have been what we people refer to as blacklisted in the industry or there being some other kind of monetary impact to her. The question still remains, though, between the time that she left the show and now, you know, why now. Um, it did strike me that she filed it just, I think, a few days before the deadline, um, the expiration of the statute of limitations. So I do think it was a tough decision for her. And it did make me think that she's been wrestling with this and going back and forth in her mind, but ultimately made the decision to preserve her right to pursue these these claims against him. Mm -hmm. Such great points. Uh, and then his statement, Michelle, you know, where he, the first thing out of uh, his mouth in the statement was he, he criticizes her behavior and he right away starts the character assassination, saying her erratic behavior in the past. Uh, what did you think of that? Was that kind of distasteful? Yeah, it, it would have been better for him to just sort of stay silent and just say, you know, we deny the allegations and we will, you know, look forward to defending ourselves. But the smear campaign, I mean, that's that goes to the crux and heart of why a lot of people and primarily women do not speak up because that they know that they though they are the victim in the situation, they are going to be attacked and people are going to question their character, their prior relationships and decisions. And it really does 
sort of blame the victim. And so we see that dynamic here. And that's probably one of the reasons that she did wait so long. And what she was weighing is how is it going to impact my public image, um, my own character and reputation versus her need to sort of make her story and voice heard. Right, Michelle. And Nigel Lithgow, this is a powerful guy in Hollywood, real powerful. Uh, let's bring in someone else with our conversation as we continue. I want to welcome in actor, writer, and media personality, Head Crack, joining us this morning from Atlanta. Head Crack, good to see you and Happy New Year. Same to you. Yeah, oh, thank you. So let's talk a little bit about Nigel Lithgow. Um, you know how sometimes allegations can be really stunning and then sometimes somebody's reputation, once you, you hear about how they are, you're like, oh, okay, maybe not so stunning. What do we know about him, Head Crack? Uh, you know, I've never heard his name involved in too many scandals, if any at all, before. But, you know, I've been in this business long enough to get far enough down the road to, you know, nothing shocks me anymore. Like, you know... <laughs> Even what you saw with Bill Cosby, who at one point was America's dad, you know, so like if 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 he could stray away from the flock a little bit, anybody possibly can. And this is a narrative that you see so often in the business, you know what I mean? Women will keep their head down and have to endure so much harassment and so much unnecessary things just to try to get ahead in the workplace, not just in entertainment, but just in the workplace in general. So it's even worse in Hollywood because people will hold these things over your head and put you in a position where you feel like you don't have a voice. You have nobody advocating for you. So it's all possible. Right, head crack. You know, and he calls it a smear uh, campaign. He's calling it a smear, and he criticized Paul Abdul's behavior in the past, calling it erratic. Uh, what do you think about the way that he's coming out to refute this, rather than just saying, I did not do this? He's attacking her character. Uh, how do you I think mean, that's going to go for him? It's classic manipulated behavior. Um, you know, you 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 know discredit the accuser to create doubt in the hearts and minds of people because you know anybody who ever watched you know American Idol over a long period of time, you know, you always wondered what was really in those cans that she was drinking. However, you know, like that's something that they're preying upon. Maybe she used to come to work a little tipsy just to deal with the things that she had to deal with at work. We don't know. I wasn't there. Have no idea. But at the end of the day, when somebody says that something happens to them, you at least got to hear them out and then try to like, you know, dig through the details and see where the truth lies and all that. Definitely. And I wonder how much we're going to see or if we're going to see a fast settlement. Uh, Michelle Thomas, your prediction. Settlement. I think that this is probably going to be settled as quickly as possible so that both parties can move forward without the ongoing smear campaign, particularly if there's any truth to Paula Abdul's allegations. I'm with you. Head crack, do you agree? Do you think we're going to see a quick settlement? I don't know, man. Like you saw what just happened with Diddy. Diddy tried to make that situation go away. The next thing you know, it was like an amusement park line of people saying that Diddy did things to them. So I think when people look at how it works out when you pay people off and how it can bring more people out the woodworks with stories that are maybe true, maybe not true, you don't know. So it's going to be an interesting play because no case is the same. That's the truth. We got to see if the juice is worth the squeeze uh, to settle or not Ooh. settle.